Hi there, Bruce from Safari, and what we're looking at here today is a, is a package that we call Achieve the Impossible. And the reason why we say that is from this fairly compact package here, we're able to uh, run an induction cooktop, we're able to run an espresso coffee machine, and we're also able to run a small uh, electric hot water system. So it's possible to totally uh, ditch the LPG and run uh, your four-wheel drive or camper trailer totally off a free solar power. So combined with probably five, 600 watts of solar, you're able to be self-sufficient and, uh, and do it in a very, very clean way. Let's have a look at the whole video. In this package here, we've got a 2,000 watt inverter. Uh, we've got a 30 amp uh, 240 volt charger. We've got a DC to DC from the vehicle at 30 amps. We've got a 20 amp solar controller. And I'm showing the solar performance here as it's changing outside um, on the um, iPhone app here. Uh, we've got these breakers you can see labeled. So this is actually going to the uh, Pico display. We've got the DC to DC breaker. We've got the solar breakers on at the moment. And we've got the switch breaker going out to the switches. Um, we've got two shunts in here. Uh, we've got this one here is running purely for the inverter whereas um, this collection here of four 25 amp shunts are labelled and it's running out for uh, power coming in from the solar and the DC to DC 12 volt outlets and a dedicated channel for the refrigeration main breaker, mega fuse let's have a look at the inverter here 2000 watt inverter and you can see here remote switch off uh, we can turn the inverter on and off uh, from the app, but in this case we've got it wired up to a switch. Let me just turn that on. You can see now the um, induction cooktop I'm running now is pulling just under 1800 watts. Uh, we're in inverting mode at the moment uh, as we're operating, um, and we can put different um, alarms on this. Let's just have a look at our settings that we can put on this. So we can change the low battery shutdown, uh, the restart and alarm. Uh, we can put in charge detect so that if 240 volts is coming into the system here, it'll detect that and um, turn off the inverter. Um, we've got wake up power, we've got shutdown power as well and um, eco search mode. So that's the inverter. Um, now we're looking at the DC to DC here, the 30 amp, you can see where in absorption charge here at the moment and the settings on this DC to DC are simple but fantastic. So we've got an input voltage lockout so if on your four wheel drive you're running um, very high power on your lights or a winch and the voltage starts to drop you can then turn this unit off to give more power to other devices but this is the really smart stuff. This is the engine startup and shutdown detection so you do not need an ignition wire. You can put one in, you can override it. It does have a remote as well, but you don't need to do it. And you can just put in here the nominal voltage and it will come on and off automatically. Uh, just fantastic. Uh, this is the 240 volt charger. It's a very simple um, app here that shows you the power coming out of it, um, the battery voltage going out. It shows you on a graph what stage it's at. So it's an absorption charge at the moment. And there's a number of settings we can put on here important one is we can turn it into night mode, makes it quieter, no fan runs. It's got a storage mode on it. So for the lithium batteries, if they're not being used, it will automatically go into storage mode. So the greatest killer for lithium batteries are if you store them at 100%. Stored at 100% in a year, they'll lose 20% capacity. So storage mode is absolutely crucial uh, for lithium batteries. Now the last app that we're looking at is by far the most powerful with a Victron, and that's the solar control. So we have the status here. You can see that we're coming off at 57 volts. So we're coming off in series. This solar control will take up to 100 coming off the panel. Uh, the importance of that is we get an early start, late finish. So we're going to be getting solar at least an hour earlier and an hour later than uh, most conventional panels going into a normal combo DC to DC solar uh, package. Um, we're in bulk mode here. Uh, we've got the history. We touch this gives us the short term history, I've only been running it for a day here. If I touch this button here and turn the phone sideways it will give me a 30 day history. And then for commissioning this trend is uh, just great. So this is showing solar power in watts and solar current. And typically when we're commissioning we cover up panel at a time 
and after we cover up panel at the time, if I come up here, I want to see what the solar voltage is off the panels that aren't covered up so that uh, we can see that all the panels are performing in a consistent way to spec. So the trend is just fantastic for uh, commissioning. Um, overall, the solar controller here running at 98% beats any of the combo units which are typically running 10% less. So it's effectively with this solar controller you're getting 10% more solar power. Thank you. Hi, Bruce from Safari, and we're seeing part two of what we call achieving the impossible with uh, endless supply of uh, solar power running uh, appliances. Um, and what, we've got setting, what we're looking at now is the Symarine display. We've got our breaker switches over here, standard sleep screen. This is giving you time to go and the state of charge of the batteries here, which are 100%. And we've got the Symarine app running down here in uh, dark mode on the phone. And I've also got on the app showing the water level, fresh water, general water, and the current uh, fridge freezer temperature. Uh, let's have a look at our induction cooktop here now running um, off this uh, perfect setup. The induction cooktop here is a built-in model. So it's a 260 millimeter cutout, 288 around the top, 1800 watts, control touch sensor operation on the top here. Um, but just before we do that, we'll change the display here to show the current. So let's fire it up now. And we're running off the 2000 watt smart inverter. So you see now we're doing 173 amps um, on the screen there. Uh, the big advantage of the induction cooktop is in a windy scenario, absolutely uh, fantastic by the beach or in high wind, Western Australia, you have no issue at all about flame. It's 94% efficient. So it will actually um, heat the water. We've got just over a litre in there at the moment. It'll heat that in three minutes. Uh, whereas uh, gas will take roughly uh, twice as long and an electric hob will take three to four times as long. The other big advantage of it is that once I remove the pot, it's cool to touch. And in terms of special pots, this cast iron pot here I've had for over 30 years and it's actually like a camp oven pot. I just put that straight on there. You can see the steam already starting to rise off the pot here. Um, and the bubbles are forming at the bottom al already. It's nearly about to boil. Um, so as I take this off, it's cool to touch. Um, I can also do a slow cook on this and put it in the lowest setting and uh, do that. So if I take it down a setting, you see there we're at 122 amps. And in the lowest setting, it pulses um, on and off. So that it puts a certain amount of power on for a short period of time coming on and off. It has a childproof lock on it. It's perfectly matched to the 2000 watt uh, smart inverter. Let's turn it off now. And it's now in a shutdown mode. So the fan is still running using a small amount of current. Um, and once the uh, induction coil cools down, the fan will turn off. Now, before we step through the uh, lights, let's have a look at the coffee machine over here. So uh, this is a standard, uh, espresso machine as I turn it on you can see the currents going up to as high as 150 amps at time and uh, the pumps running temperature comes in and out the inverter's got to be a, a very fast responsive inverter to uh, to handle the espresso machine but it just does that uh, perfectly so you can just see it on the display there so running the coffee machine we can run for another six hours and there we are that's like the perfect uh, espresso there thank you and lastly let's have a look at the classic switch that we've got here and the lights so this is the slimline light down the bottom here six millimeters thin comes in a square end or a roundish end and uh, these lights here, 105 millimeter square. These are both dual color lights, you'll see them running. We've got our um, six gang uh, breaker switches over here. It comes in a six or a four. And um, so let's just turn on these lights now. So there's the white in the center here and the white around the slim line. Slim line's very soft, very diffused. Um, then this one here is the uh, amber no insects, perfect for outside. And then lastly, We've got this uh, beautiful blue colour here that you'll see come on 
perfect for the marine customers. Turn that off. Now let's just have a look at the dimming. As I hold my finger down on the switch, it dims down, which you can see, and I can turn it off. When I turn it on again, it returns to the dim state. So these switches are in a black alloy uh, material, same material finish as the Cymarine display, exactly the same size. Um, the classic switch is wired directly to the back of the switch, so it's a standalone switch, whereas the smart switch um, is integrated with a wireless control system as well as having the buttons appear here. Um, there is a backlight here that does come up in the blue as well. Thank you.